Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time of the day you are watching us here at Dr. Rob, Spirits in the Supernatural, the YouTube version. Welcome, Patrick. How you doing, Dr. Rob? It's been a while. It's been a couple of, couple of months since we've done a video, and, uh, you know, you've been really busy, and I've been really busy, and today is the day, so, um, you know, just want to thank the viewers for uh, tuning into our videos. Uh, some of them have become very popular on YouTube, and we just appreciate all of the the views and the comments. Um, also, just have one small request from our viewers. If you're watching this video at 3 in the morning and you decide that you would like to call me for a consultation, why don't you wait until at least 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time before placing that call? I do answer my phones, yes, that is true, but at 3 in the morning you are not going to get a consultation. You will get an appointment for a consultation. I only have to say that, Patrick, and it's not because I don't want to hear from our viewers, because I do. I enjoy talking to our viewers very much. However, at 3 in the morning is not an appropriate time to call Dr. Rob. I've had several phone calls over the last, I don't know, seven, eight months since we put these videos up. And some have been legitimate calls for people looking for help. Some have been uh, people that wanting to talk to Kurt Cobain um, at 3, 4, 5, 6 in the morning. And I just have to ask you to use discretion when calling. If, this an, if it is an emergency, well, feel free to call me, and I'll take it on a case-by-case -case basis. But generally, you calling me at 12 o'clock or 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock, you're only going to get an appointment for the next day. So with that said, Patrick, I just had to make that little caveat to the fact that all of our videos are up, and my phone number is out there. And that is my phone number you know, for my office, but I have a lot of clients from all over the world who call. So if you could just, you know, please use discretion when, get, when calling that number, I would, would greatly appreciate it. Okay, so uh, I guess not even at a quarter to three is acceptable then for people, right? Uh, yeah, just use discretion. You know, if you're going to want to talk to somebody from the other side, if I'm dead asleep and I wake up, I would have to call you back within a half hour to an hour once I'm fully awake. It's not like I can just, like, pop it up, you know, in my dreams. So, uh, you know, just, I'm just asking the viewers to use discretion, of course. And like I said, everything is a case-by-case -case basis. You know, if, if it's desperate need to call me at 3 in the morning, then call me at 3 in the morning. But if you're calling me for an appointment and I can wait till the next day, just go ahead and wait until the next day before you actually make that call. Yeah, and I think uh, it's real easy just to lose track of all the time zones because, you know, now that there's really not the long-distance barriers there used to be, you know, you may... Absolutely calls more frequently. I know sometimes I've called you, depending on where you were in the country, it was some goofy hour, but in my world, it might have only been, you know, 11.30 at night. So, yeah, it's easy to do. Yes, it is easy to do. But remember that I am on Eastern Standard Time, so definitely. Well, Patrick, what do you have in store for us today? I've been excited. Okay, well, actually, a while back, you know, we had kind of, I had had the idea from one of the uh, viewers that put in the suggestion for Steve Jobs. So I okay. had the questioning prepared, but what's interesting is um, now I'm looking and we're coming right up. He was born on February 24th, so we're coming right up on his birthday. So it's ki kind of ironic because we both got busy and we've rescheduled the show for several different times now that it happens to fall right around his birthday now. Patrick, after all these years, you should know nothing is by coincidence. Everything well, yeah, and none of it ceases to amaze me every time it happens, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, we yeah, do want to apologize for the slight graininess to the video uh, quality on my side. My internet connection where I'm at today is very slow, so therefore the audio and the video are going to be a little bit slower than normal. But we just thought it was very important to get the show out, and uh, since uh, this is where I'm at today, uh, we just had to use what we have available to us. Yes, and on my end, I'm not using my normal computer. I've set up more of a stationary desktop computer, and I've just put a new camera on here, and the picture quality is not bad, but it seems like I'm having audio problems on the microphone with it, so I've had to revert back to the uh, handy uh, desktop boom mic that was real popular in the uh, mid-90s. Yeah. I have it in the drawer. <laughs> it is flashback day, Patrick. Flashback day. Yeah, it is. It's retro. Retro show. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I know usually you have to kind of take a little preparation. Is Steve Jobs nearby, or you need to work on getting him a hold of him? Okay. 
I do have him with us today. Was he already planning on being here by chance? Um, well, we spoke about half an hour ago, and as soon as we spoke, I tried to make contact with him. So yes, he is with us. Okay, great. Now, how has he been, and what has he been doing since his passing in October 5th of 2011? I would say that Steve has been very, very busy. You know, uh, his company was his life uh, when he was alive, and now that he's gone on the other side, it is still a part of who he is. You know, I, I, I have a feeling that, you know, there's been a lot of uh, talk uh, there at the corporate offices, you know, of him walking the halls. Uh, you know, I, I haven't read that, but I just feel like, you know, he's, he's still there every day. You know, it's like he's still inspiring his his designers. He's still inspiring his his former staff. You know, I don't think he'll ever leave that area. You know, I mean, I've said this in the past in um, several shows. Heaven is what we make of it. And for him, that was a life passion because he saw the things that he could, you know, he could create and, and things that he could change about the world. And I, I really believe that that, you know, is his mission on the other side, to continue his work as he did as he was alive. Well, he says there's a lot of innovations coming from Apple. You know, they have really uh, are going to start developing not only new technologies, but there seems to be a lot of things for everyday use and that's going to be coming out in the next five years. He says there's a lot of things to do with medical um, that are going to be, you know, innovations in how to do heart surgeries, brain surgeries. They're developing things there that no one else has even thought of before. And he said that that's going to be a practical application to some of the things that Apple's going to be, you know, focusing on in the near future. Yeah, and that really doesn't surprise me much because, like I said, they've kind of always been a trendsetter. And uh, even though he's probably frowning that uh, I'm not sure what kind of laptop you're on, but I'm on a Belson now. Even if someone isn't an Apple, you know, avid user, I've always been more PC based. But I still have to attribute a lot of the inspiration and the technology for a lot of the other brands all stem from Absolutely. Apple Absolutely. What else would you like to say? Now, does, uh, I was going to say, uh, who else does he regularly associate with uh, after his I passing? would say that Steve is really just focused on Apple. You know, he's focused on the corporation. He's focused on the people of the corporation. You know, leading the next CEO to the next level. You know, I, I, I am being told about dreams that he's appeared in to try to, you know, give inspiration from the other side. And I really think that that's really just his, old, his only focus right now. You know, I don't really see him hanging out with anybody in particular, you know, that I could say, okay, yeah, they talk every day or, you know, even occasionally. He's just, he's just focused on that. No, he said that this is his this is his mission on the afterlife is to continue the work there. So until that company has gotten to a point where it's beyond what his mission is, then he's going to be there. Um, he's not at the helm anymore, but he's just like kind of the angel guiding the company. That's what you could call it. Wow, that's really very cool. Um, now, you know, on the other side, we know that it's seems to be a lot more advanced. Do they actually have, so to speak, technology or devices that they have here? Or how does some of that, or is he trying to carry over things? Um, I wouldn't say have? that, you know, there's like mobile phones in heaven, you know, that kind of thing. I think that whatever we have on Earth is mirrored, you know, is a mirror image of what's up there to a certain extent. Uh, but use of technology, I think, is more for us than for them. They don't need it. You know, if they want something to happen, they just make it happen. You know, with, with us, we need these devices to better our lives and to better our children's lives. And I think that's really what he was focused on when he was getting ready to pass, because he knew he was going to pass. 
that was beyond a shadow of a doubt. He tried to stave it off for as long as possible to continue his work, but when the end came, he knew it was coming. You know, he was very much aware that, you know, this is when I'm going to die. So, you know, I think he tried to prepare himself as best as possible, but I think also there are things that you just can't prepare for. You know, and now that he's on the other side, it's not as easy to inspire as when he was alive. That's for sure. Oh, I bet. That's for sure. Um, you know, he had mentioned, you know, the, you know, technology for the future of people's children. Now, does he still frequently visit his children or his Um, wife? I would say that he's, he's around them, but he's not around them all the time. You know, he was more of a business-driven man when he was alive, he tells me. And family was important to him, but not as important as business. So he had a relationship with them, but it was not a close relationship like you would expect. And some of that, I think it's getting that way in the world, just more in general, that people are busy and everybody's got different concerns. So I don't think you have some of the same cohesion that you maybe used to have. In Absolutely. Years Absolutely. Ago. Now, um, what would he say, you know, out of his own career? Because I know, you know, he was there at the beginning of the pioneering of the original, like I said, Macintosh and the software, which pretty much is what brought in systems like Windows, which were kind of almost knockoffs. And I know him and Bill Gates had a falling out kind of over that originally because he was supposed to only be seeing that so he could write some software for the Macintosh and then we had Windows a few years later. Um, how did that really play out? I mean, we, you know, we know we read. They had, he says they had a relationship of that. mutual respect, but they were never friends. They were never, you know, they were business rivals. Uh, you know, he said he gave him a lot of ideas that he never got credit for as well. So it was kind of like an equal you know, uh, relationship as far as like one person got an idea shared with the other, and I think that went back and forth. So there really is nothing that you know they weren't best friends by any means, but they just had a mutual respect for you know developing technology, and they did work on some things together, but it was mainly just to you know better themselves. And I think that's kind of you know how how you can look at their relationship. Okay, and yeah, I guess the common Absolutely. good was still to get some of this technology out there, so it still achieved yeah. that goal. Yeah. Yeah, they were never meant to be best friends. They were just meant to be, you know, inspiration for each other, basically. Now, even though we probably kind of know the answer to this, it's still one of those questions you like to ask. That, you know, back when uh, him and Steve Wozniak. I'm not sure how this pronunciation is. Wozniak started working on Apple in the garage in the 1976. Did they have any idea at all that it would become? He, he said he has? also had a vision back then of this being uh, a multinational company, something bigger than the both of them. So he always had that in the back of his head as they were developing the technologies as they were going forward with this. And for him, it was just like kind of like a vision shown to him from the very beginning that just kind of played out for the rest of his life. Wow. I guess it's, that's, it makes it kind of nice because sometimes you don't always have that, that guidance or vision, the fact that he had that. He said that helped him to continue on even when everything was looking bleak, is what he said. So I have to say that that's, you know, there had to been some financial difficulties, obviously, at the very beginning. You know, and even in even in the middle when everyone else lost lost faith, he still kept on to that that vision, and that's the only reason why Apple is where it is. Yeah, because uh, there was a time when he was even removed from uh, his position there, and uh, kind of went out on his own. I believe didn't even uh, invest in a basically uh, a movie production company. Uh, wasn't it? I, think I don't know. I don't follow. I don't follow those kind of things, Patrick. I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't answer that. I can ask him. Um, yeah. He said the. He said the reason why he branched off like that is because that, that was part of the inspiration. You know. And I. And he says that. He said that for him, it was just the next step. You know, he always wanted to do entertainment. And I think that for him, that was his way of, of getting involved, yes. Okay. Now, uh, I'm sure, you know, 
most people we've always talked to, there's always some things they would have done differently. Can he think of any specifics that, you know, looking back, he would have maybe done differently, whether it was his personal life? He's one of those who says, yeah, I have no regrets. Everything was the way it was supposed to be for him. He, he, he couldn't, he said even now, looking back, he can't second guess what he did because it all worked out the way it was supposed to. So he's very satisfied with his life and his decisions. Now, um, do you see any future cures? Maybe what are apples going to help release them, or just in general, in the very near future, um, for things such as like pancreatic cancer, which is what you know basically uh, kind of caused. He says he's basically times. where he sees medical advancements is in software for robots, and he says you know the robotic arms doing surgeries helping in surgeries. He said that they're going to kind of develop in that direction, but he didn't say anything about developing cancer cures or, you know, working on that. So I would say that, you know, that's where his medical, where he says medical advancements are going to come from. So it looks like probably still a lot of the answers for things like cancer is I would assume so, yes. early prevention then, I would assume. Okay, and he had already kind of told us some of briefly where he saw Apple heading in the future, but uh, what do you think are some things we could look for probably, you know, within the next year or two or three that uh, might be uh, cutting edge or, you know... He said there's going to be better handheld devices that are going to come out that are going to be, you know, more user-friendly. And he said it's not so much as the laptops and the... Uh, and the, and the you know, desktops, he's talking more about mobile devices, you know, being everywhere. Touchscreen, you know, when you go to McDonald's, instead of ordering uh, from McDonald's, you'll order from the screen, you know, and I think that technology is already there, but it's just not widespread. And he said that's kind of where he sees things developing or things growing. In the next year, he, he said maybe they're focusing on the phones, you know, making the phones more user-friendly, you know, and because they need the capital. And he says the cell phones are where the capital is coming from. A lot of these devices, it is amazing what they can do. I mean, just as far as the auto log on, the recognitions I've noticed even my own smartphone, even my laptop. I mean, there's becoming a good synchronicity and, uh, with everything. But I know a lot of people also are getting concerned because although a lot of this technology can be used for really good things, it also can be used for things that we wouldn't find not, you know, so desirable. Um, you know, we hear a lot of the NSA spying and different things. Um, What's his take on that or where that's him, going? It's always going to be the ability. If, you, if they want to see us, they're going to see us. You know, and he says it's not something the average person has to worry about. So for him, it doesn't seem to be a big issue. See, uh, this what kind of maybe a uh, messages or advice does he have for his fans, um, especially if you're into technology or you know pursuing really anything? He's an example of hacking. He says that you know the big thing, the next big thing, is just continue developing new technologies. Is to believe in yourself. You know, if you get an inspired idea to develop it, you never know where the next. Bill Gates is going to come from. You never know where the next Steve Jobs is going to come from. You know, and technology is so advanced that it changes monthly. It's not even it's not even every six months now. You go out and you buy a computer, and he says then next week it's going to be outdated because there's always going to be something new coming up behind it. So you know, just do your best to to develop what you are what you feel is right. Yeah, and especially with technology, I mean, that is so true, just like I know, you know, part of the thing I was busy with is I was been setting up a little bit of the Bitcoin mining. For our viewers, Patrick, I have, kind of I have to say this to our viewers. But it is. And someday, Patrick, I believe that you're going to achieve that goal. I really do. Because you have always have your hand in so many different things. Every time I talk to you, it's always, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, you know. And someday, Patrick, I believe that you're going to achieve that goal. I really do. Because you have always have your hand in so many different things. 
But every time I talk to you, it's always I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You know, Patrick is like the eBay king. You know, he can find things and turn them into dollars. It's amazing sometimes. So, you know, the Bitcoin technology is still risky, Patrick, and we don't want to, you know, encourage our viewers to take risks like that. But, you know, for the amount of money that you're investing, you are getting a return. We'll just put it that way. Yeah, but uh, I was into his point that, uh, yeah, it seems like some of these, you know, different ASIC chips and things you order, I mean, the price drops are literally about the time yeah. you've received and they've already dropped because there's new things on the way. And I think that's been an age-old battle with technology. I mean, I've learned it doesn't always serve you to buy the newest or best right away at the premium price because even like my, what I paid for my first laptop and what I paid for my most recent one, the difference in price and capabilities is just amazing and that's just in the, you know a few years right absolutely range well patrick i'm going to wrap this so up with fast. him he's got other things to do besides sit here and talk to us all day so i'm gonna let steve jobs go back to whatever it is he was doing <laughs> today and uh so whether you listen to us in the morning the afternoon or the evening have a great night thanks again dr rob and uh just you know to mention the people for season 2013 last year ended kind of abruptly because it was very hard to schedule things around our activities. So this year, even though it's a 2014 season, we're just going to be having more just sporadic try to interviews as we can, you know, synchronize our timing. And hopefully we'll, you know, be lucky enough to get several episodes up. Um, if you do have any possible uh, requests, go ahead and list them in the comments of, uh, you know, one of the videos. And we'll uh, try and attempt to reach them. Sometimes some of these requests we've gotten, the people weren't reachable at the time, or they don't always want to come through when we're, you know, requesting it. So, but we'll see what we can do. And thanks again. And we'll keep uh, working on cleaning up some of the picture quality and things here. We've been offline, and I've just like I said, set up another computer. And uh, Dr. Rob's camera. I don't know if it's going on the fridge or what it is. We might have to get him another one of those as well. Uh, he looks like a witness off of 60 Minutes or something that wants her identity secret. <laughs> okay, thanks, Pat. Hey, thanks again, Rob. And